Hi guys, my name is Anuj Jindal and I welcome you to my channel. Today we are going to move our discussion forward and talk about some more important questions for the upcoming NABARD and RBI examination. All these questions have been picked up from the current affairs for the month of March. A lot of these questions that I am going to discuss today I connected with the field of finance and therefore they are hold more importance for the RBI examination rather than NABARD examination. Without wasting any time, let's start with the discussion. The first question is FAME 2 has the following features except. So the question talks about FAME 2. Let's understand the meaning of FAME, the full form of FAME and the objective of FAME. If you already know the full form of FAME, please provide it in the comment section below so that I know that you have understood and you remember these kind of things uh, before the examination, right before the examination or not. So FAME stands for Faster Adoption and Manufacturing of Electric Vehicles. Faster Adoption, Faster Adoption and Manufacturing, Manufacturing of Electric Vehicles. FAME was launched in the year 2015, that was the first part and now FAME 2 has been launched. Let's understand the uh, objectives or the features of FAME 2. The first option is it has allocated a total of 10,000 crore to boost electric mobility in the country. Out of 10,000 crore, 1,000 crore has been allocated for charging stations. FAME 2 is focused on incentivizing both manufacturer and consumer to shift towards electric vehicles. FAME 2 is targeted towards retail vehicles only. It does not target commercial vehicles. Well, FAME 2 which has been launched recently has yes allocated 10,000 crore out of which 1000 crore has been allocated to charging stations and the remaining about 8400 something crore has been allocated towards uh, incentivizing the consumer and the manufacturer through subsidies, through subsidies or incentives that they are going to get. So let's say tomorrow you go out and uh, decide to buy an electric vehicle, let's say by Mahindra and uh, uh, the electric vehicle that they are creating I believe is E2O. So uh, let's say the market price of that vehicle should be 10 lakh but uh, because of FAME 2 a subsidy of uh, 2 lakh is being provided to the consumer to the final customer. So you are able to buy that vehicle for 8 lakh instead of shelling out 10 lakhs. So that is the advantage that has been utilized through this 8400 something crore that has been allocated under FAME 2 and 1000 crore as I said for charging stations so both these A and B are correct. C is also correct because FAME and FAME 2 tries to incentivize not only the consumer but also the manufacturer by incentivizing them to produce more and more electric vehicles to, more, to do more R&D towards electric vehicles. What FAME 2 does not do is it does not target only retail vehicles. So what exactly is happening is uh, an incentive of 10,000 per kilowatt of uh, the battery that you have. So let us say you have uh, a battery of 20 kilowatts so you will get a get an incentive of 2 lakh rupees. So this 10,000 per kilowatt of incent incentive is being provided to retail consumers and for commercial consumers or commercial buyers like bus buyers etc. an incentive of rupees 20,000 per kilowatt of battery has been provided to commercial vehicles. Okay? So these are all the features of FAME 2. Let us move on to the second question. Which of the following facilitates empowerment of women? If you are uh, well aware about what empowerment of women means, how it can be achieved, it is a simple question. Let us go towards the answer options. Better access to education. If you have better access to education, you certainly feel more empowered. You have more rights in the society. You are more vocal about your rights in the society. Therefore, yes, it facilitates empowerment of women. Monetization of care economy. If uh, let us assume that tomorrow your mother who is let us assume a homemaker, if she starts getting paid or whatever she is doing, if it is written down and noted in the GDP of the economy, she will certainly feel more empowered and therefore that monetization of care economy, the concept of care economy I discussed in the last video I believe. So if you have not seen that, go and watch uh, that video wherein I discussed care economy in detail. So monetization of care economy, yes, it contributes towards empowerment of women. Influencing social settings for their equality. If the social set settings are uh, more in favor of women or uh, targeted towards creating equality, yes, it results in empowerment of women. A recent move related to changing the social settings was the uh, you know, so-called freebies for women in Delhi in the transportation sector. 
but I totally support that particular move because it is trying to change the social setting towards women or for the empowerment of women by not only giving them monetary benefits but also trying to make them or force them step out of their houses make their lives easier step out of their houses become an active part of the economy because presently only 11 percent of the total workforce in delhi consists of women so why not have them also and therefore that particular move so a lot of criticisms but i believe that uh, a balance can be created only when you disbalance the on already disbalanced uh, balance that you have so for example if there is a balance there is rice on this side and there is there are let's say rocks on this side and rocks are lighter than rice so you want to put on more rocks in order to balance it out so uh, you cannot do it or it will be more time consuming if you let's say put in 2 kg of rocks and 1 kg of rice every time you try to balance it out what will be more beneficial is that you stop giving anything to rice and start putting more and more rocks so that it balances out and that is what is being done rather than providing let's say 50 percent incentives to men and 100 percent to women you provide everything to women and there is nothing wrong with that all that tax money is going directly towards the people only in one way or the other providing reservation for their enhanced participation reservation has traditionally been accepted through various researches also that it directly contributes towards social empowerment so yes that is also correct so the answer is all are correct a more technical question more related with finance let's discuss this consider the following statements about white label atms and identify the incorrect one we have to identify the incorrect one there has been a recent change of rules related to white label atms by rbi and that's why this question becomes important white label atms are non banking entities involved in setting up and running atms this is correct white label atms work as outsourced agencies of banks they cannot function on their own we don't know whether it's correct or not white label atms are allowed to display advertisements of non financial products can they display advertisements at all we don't know white label atms do not accept cash deposits in atms yes they cannot because they are not banks only banks can accept cash deposits white label atms are not banks therefore they cannot accept bank deposits so this is also correct so both these are correct features of white label atms we are confused between b and c the recent change of rules has in effect allowed white label atms to display advertisements of non financial products and therefore this is also now a feature of white label atms but like white label atms are not outsourced agencies of banks wsas wlas are independent agencies tata was the first one which started with white label atms and they can function on their own they can merge or they can let's say work with a multiple banks and can uh, provide services to all those banks and provide services of all those banks to the people therefore they are not outsourced agencies of banks so b is our answer here let's come to the next question which of the following are allowed to deal in commodity exchanges again a question more pertinent towards finance section for the upcoming rb examination not very important for uh, nabard but because we are dealing with commodity exchanges nabard also might find it interesting mutual funds and portfolio managers have been recently allowed to take part in commodity exchanges alternative investment funds foreign investors and commercial banks have already been allowed to deal in commodity exchanges in the past that is why our answer is all are allowed let's come to the last uh, question which is in fact one of the most important ones i'm expecting a question from the concept or from the news item that has been created out of this and therefore it becomes important if not in nabard then certainly in rbi examination one question if you know the answer provided in the comment section below before i do it and i'm going to explain the concept of open offer in detail as well the options are providing existing shareholders an opportunity to stop an acquisition does open offer apply or does open offer give an opportunity to existing shareholders to stop an acquisition i don't know providing existing shareholders an opportunity to exit post acquisition providing existing shareholders an opportunity to gain from an acquisition by selling their shares in the market at a higher price obliging acquirers to offer equal ratio of shares to existing shareholders too let's take an example to understand this let's say there are two companies there is apple and there is google 
Let's say Apple says that I want to acquire Google. It already holds 10% share in uh, uh, Google, but it wants to acquire Google uh, or have a higher share. Let's say it wants to increase the shareholding to 17%. Now, whenever a company wants to hold more than 15% shares in another company, it has to go forward uh, through open offer. What happens in open offer is, let's say it wants to increase it to 17%. So it will go to the sh share market and it will call out to all the existing shareholders. And it says that I am willing to buy 20% additional shares uh, from these existing shareholders. So if you're willing to uh, you know, uh, exit from Google market, exit from this shareholding, you can do so. I'm able and I'm willing to buy this additional 20% share, uh, shares from the market through an open offer. The purpose is that if a company wants to buy out another company and the existing shareholders feel that they might lose out in the future, they don't like that acquisition, they don't like that offer, they can exit the market and they should be given the opportunity to exit from the market. Now open offer is uh, applicable to promoters. If promoters want to buy uh, shares more than 15% in their company, to non-promoters as well if any other company wants to buy and if a company wants to delist from the market. If a company wants to delist from the stock exchange, then also it has to uh, go to the existing shareholders and provide them an opportunity to exit from the market through an open offer. I hope you have understood what exactly an open offer is and how it exactly works. So these were the questions for today. Uh, more questions pertinent to the finance section of RBI examination, but because they are directly connected with current affairs, they can also be asked in RBI examination. I hope you liked the lesson. If you did, do not forget to subscribe to the channel and press the bell icon. All the very best. Take care.